Got it? Yeah. All right. Okay, good morning, everybody, and, and let's get started right away. I appreciate your coming, especially uh, uh, today, because uh, this is a matter on which we, upon which we need public cooperation, and getting the message out to the public is particularly important this morning. So last night, we got all of one one-hundredth of an inch of rain. And the last measurable rainfall was June 23rd when we received 69 hundredths of one inch of rain. So, so much for the old saw about when it rains it pours, right? The reason we're here today is this lack of rain and the very high temperatures that are combined now with greatly reduced river flows. If they've altogether, this has created a situation in which we badly need the help of the public. Our daily water usage topped 80 million gallons for the first time this year on Tuesday. Yesterday's usage was down just a little, 76 million gallons. In order to ensure that we have an adequate water supply for drinking and for fire protection and other essential uses for the rest of the summer, we must reduce our water usage to no more than 65 million gallons per day. We're asking the public to reduce water consumption by about 20%, and we believe that it can be accomplished if everyone would just comply with the designated day outdoor watering schedule. Let me remind you, Properties with street addresses ending in even numbers, including zero, are asked to limit outdoor water use to Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Properties with addresses in odd numbers are asked to limit outdoor watering to Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Those property owners with more than one street address at the same location can choose either daily schedule and let the water department know which <coughs> schedule they're on. Those with automatic lawn irrigation systems are encouraged to set them to correspond with the designated watering days. We are again asking for voluntary compliance at this time. No one, least of all your mayor, wants to mandate water restrictions. The city has not issued mandatory water restrictions since 2002. Keep in mind that in July of 2002, when this happened, temperatures were not as high as they are now. We had received some rainfall, and the lowest river flow in July of 2002 was about 650 cubic feet per second. River flow yesterday was below 300 cubic feet per second. I want to remind the public that there are several major benefits to watering less. First, you'll save money. Our water rates are structured to encourage conservation. The more you use, the higher the rate you're charged. Second, watering too much is unhealthy for the grass and landscaping, uh, the very materials you're trying to save. I'm pleased that one of our local experts will talk in just a minute, Andy Campbell from Campbell's Nurseries, uh, about uh, what may be too much and why, in most cases, we should not water every day. I encourage the public to go to our city website, lincoln.ne.gov. Right on the home page, you'll be able to track the city's water usage. Remember, again, our goal is to use no more than 65 million gallons a day. You will also find the designated day watering schedule on the website, as well as a great deal of information about the simple steps that you can take to reduce water consumption. So at this time, uh, I want to invite Jerry Obris, the our utilities uh, 
coordinator for the water system to come up and give you some more technical information and, and to build on what I've told you so far. Jerry, please. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Uh, you see up on the screen the usage that we track every day and you, the top line is where we're uh, working at right now and you can see previous years were quite a bit lower than that because we had adequate rainfall. Usage is, is considerably up and we need to get, as the mayor indicated, our usage down to 65 million gallons a day. Uh, we're going to plot up here the river flow chart. We'll kind of show you historically kind of where we're at. Be the back one. There we go. Um, if you look at the black line, the dotted line there, that is the median flow of all the flow in the river through this period of time uh, over about a 40-year period. The <clears throat> green line is where we were last year. You can see we had plenty of river flow last year. 2002 is the red line, and you can see how that plots over time. And, and as the mayor mentioned, we got down to about 650 CFS in the river. Now if you look at the blue line, that's where we're plotting today. And uh, we had a pretty good rain in May, but nothing serious since, and a little bit of rain in June. And then it's been headed downward, and we're at around 300 CFS in the river. And it's below the red line, and it's also way below the median flow. <clears throat> Computer modeling has indicated that we can sustain uh, our usage at around 65 million gallons a day, which is our, we want to meet our essential needs with the current uh, facilities we have in place, and we can do that probably for about 45 days with uh, river flows in the range that they're at right now. And we are going to review this on a weekly basis. We really encourage you to cut your usage down. We want to thank you for what you did yesterday of lowering at 4 million. You're headed the right way. We need to get down to 65. And we will take it, continue to monitor the river situation and also our operations. And we will uh, hopefully let you know next week you've been doing great and we can still stay involuntary. Uh, and we really do want to avoid mandatory. The citizens have in the past responded very well. And we know that you can do it again. And uh, the next one is on the drawdown. This is where our concern is. If you see the blue in there, that is the top of that is the, where the water table is. This is pictorial. And you can see where our well screens are on vertical wells or in the lower half of the aquifer, but you can only use the upper portion. And at the pumping area where you're pumping directly, you do have what they call a drawdown the water depresses down because it's flowing into the well at a rapid rate. So you get a depression. We also have what we call a horizontal well where we're, we screen lower in the aquifer and we have more of the aquifer we can use. We have two horizontal wells and we hope in the future to get a third one in which would help us through these critical times like this. So <clears throat> we're managing this and trying to lower the aquifer uniformly down. Another uh, item on the, the downside is we've had 35 main breaks over the last 28 days and uh, that's because of the shrinking of the soil and just pulling things apart. Uh, the other thing we have changed our hydrant maintenance. We are maintaining hydrants but we are not flowing hydrants. We made that change last week because we're again trying to do our best on our own to conserve water. And at our own site that we have at our plant, we have, um, we have drought tolerant plants and we do not do any watering at our plant site. We have uh, buffalo grass. And then we also have a water conservation garden here in town and you're welcome to come out and look at the types of plants that can handle drought. Uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, turn this over to Andy Campbell. He will give you some hints on how you can lower your water use and then you can even uh, let your lawn go dormant. Uh, 
Thank you, Jerry and Mayor Beitler. Uh, good morning. As mentioned, my name is Andrew Campbell. I'm the manager of the Landscape Department at Campbell's Nurseries and a former member of the Mayor's Water Conservation Task Force. I've been asked to talk with you this morning about how all Lincolnites can follow current voluntary and potential mandatory water restrictions with the least effects on our lawns and landscapes. On average, half the water used during the summer months by Lincoln Water System residential clients is used to water turf and landscaped areas. Today, we're encouraging all Lincolnites to try to reduce their outside watering by 20%. While this might cause concern uh, about our plants, landscapes, and lawns, under these restrictions, our plants may not thrive, but they will survive. For many years, Lincolnites have been encouraged to follow the voluntary water restrictions, and while the restrictions have been crafted to offer all Lincolnites a fair and balanced program for water usage, the voluntary restrictions can also be in the best long-term interests of our plants, trees, and lawns. By following the restrictions, we are encouraging our plants to establish root systems better able to handle stresses like the drought we are experiencing. I and many other members of the green industry have long advocated for less frequent but longer duration waterings for our landscapes. We recommend this type of watering as it teaches our plants that we will not be their sole source of water and that they need to learn to find water on their own through well-established root systems. While restrictions implemented without letting our plants ease into the restrictions are not ideal for our plants, with some care, the long-term effects on our plants can be minimized. And once we see lower temperatures and the return of more rainfall, our plants will typically recover quickly. A handout has been created that uh, will be available on the city's website, lincoln.ne.gov, keyword conservation. There's also a link on the main page as you get to it that discusses some recommendations in more detail, but here are a few of the ones that we recommend. A 20% decrease in usage can be as simple as reducing the minutes of your sprinkler system or hand-placed sprinklers. For example, if you water 20 minutes per station or area, simply water for 15 minutes. Consider watering on only one or two of your three available days under the voluntary restrictions. As a reminder, those houses with addresses ending in odd numbers are asked to water on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Even numbered houses water on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Consider watering by hand those plants under more stress and reduce large area waterings to once or twice a week. Plants installed in the last 6 to 12 months will need more watering than more established plants. Check them at least once a week for potential hand watering on your assigned watering days. And consider reducing the watering of your lawn and let it go into a stress dormancy. Typically, once more frequent rains return, it will recover quickly. If the drought continues, aim for a quarter to one half inch of water on dormant turf every one to two weeks. This will not pull the lawn out of the, the uh, dormancy, but it will keep the crowns of the grass alive for, uh, for when we do see the needed return of rainfall. Additionally, mulching of landscape beds or around individual plants to a depth of two to three inches can help hold moisture in place and reduce the amount of water needed to keep your plants alive. Please also ensure that any watering that you do, whether by irrigation system or hose sprinklers or by hand, does not land on sidewalks, driveways, or the street. Get the water where it can be utilized versus wasted for the best effect. We also recommend that watering occur in cooler parts of the day, that could be in the early morning, or after sundown at night. If you have questions about your specific situation, we recommend you consult one of the many nursery professionals serving the City of Lincoln for more information and recommendations for your specific landscape. Overall, while none of us prefer to see restrictions implemented, it is in the best interest of all of us who live in Lincoln to work together in this time of need. By working together, we can reduce our water usage and without losing the investments we have made in our landscapes. For more information on additional ways you can conserve, including water-wise plants, ways you can conserve on your indoor usage, and more outdoor recommendations, please visit the city's website, lincoln.ne.gov, keyword conservation. Thank you. All right, Andy and Jerry, thank you very much. Uh, I did, the, the citizens of Lincoln are going to do this. Uh, we've worked together on things like this many times in the past, uh, and I'm confident that uh, they will start to pay attention and uh, work together for everybody's benefit. Uh, we're going to try to get uh, a little higher profile on what's, what's going on day by day so that people can uh, take note uh, of how we're doing each day. Uh, 
and hopefully by taking note, become engaged and, and, uh, and develop some camaraderie in, in getting us down to that 65 million level. Uh, it's a big task, but not uh, an undoable task. Uh, and I'm anxious that uh, uh, we all get together and show what kind of community we are here. Questions? Mayor, what would it take to go to mandatory? Well, uh, I think the, the Water Department is anticipating that if usage rates stayed where they are today and there was no rain, that we would be forced to talk about mandatory in about a week to 10 days. What's the difference? What happens with mandatory? I mean, can do people get fined? Um, what's mandatory about mandatory? Yeah, I don't. Let me let me ask uh, Jerry to talk about that because I don't know the details of. Yeah, in of, the uh, of that system, the city code addresses that, and there is, there is a fine that would be levied. They would be cited. For violation, they would we go through a, a process. We'll give them a warning first, and then they would be cited by the police department. But we don't really want to go there because <laughs> we both have limited resources to do that. But we will if we have to. And part of the reason for getting down to the 65 is we are starting to jeopardize fire protection. Right now, we are getting our reservoir 70 percent full. That's kind of a trigger. On that, if we go between the only 70 down to 50 percent full, then we have a problem. The upper third of the reservoir is for normal usage. The middle third is for your fire protection, and then the bottom third holds the other two up. But again, you, you have to have it elevated to keep your pressure. That keeps your pressure pretty steady. So we don't want to get into a situation where we're jeopardizing fire protection. If that were to potentially happen, what would that mean, if it were to get that low? Well, we really don't want to go there because I don't think you want your house to burn down because there's no water. And, and that's what that, the bottom line is. Um, we're fine now, but again, we need to get, because of the limitation of what we have for facilities, we have a little over half of our well field developed because we don't need any more net normally. And we have some additional development we can do. And one of the things we want to add uh, back in is another horizontal well. We've had to take it out of the budget because of low revenues. And we are we're addressing that as a separate item. And we're hoping that we can get that back in the budget in the near future. But that would help us through a situation like this. Uh, and we're hoping we can do that. Is the issue with fire that there's not enough pressure? Uh, not enough pressure water. in, it's water. You gotta have the water. Because they, they have pumpers on the trucks. They can boost the pressure, but you gotta have the water available. Nancy, on the website, if you go to our water management plan, phase three, it outlines what happens if we go to the mandatory. Okay, thank you. And then also on the water management plan, there's an appendix A that has some additional hints. There's a lot of things you can do, and as Andy pointed out, um, every nurseryman I've talked to says most of the time when a plant dies, it's because we've drowned it. So there's uh, a lot of things we can do to, to save water. And 20% is not an unreasonable amount to reduce. What, let's say that nobody reduces their water and everyone stays right here, if, because you said it's 45 days if they go down to 65 million, right? Well, we can sustain that for 45 days on a computer models. But remember, a computer model may not be the total reality in the field. So it's balanced against reality in the field. But so if, if nobody changes their water consumption, how many days would, it, would they be able to sustain we can, we can At 65, we can sustain a, that for about 45 days. And we've got a lot of summer left. We've got 45 days of summer left. I think the question is, at 80, how long yeah. Well, at 80, what will happen is we're going to start jeopardizing reservoir storage because we just won't be able to get the water. Uh, it's not that we can't deliver, but we won't have the water available to draw, to deliver. But how many days could you sustain? Do you have any idea? I don't want to test it. Uh, you know, maybe a week or so. But that's one of the things we had to do 
in 2002, this is history again. 2002, we were in the low 90s and upper 80s. And we asked them to get down to 65. That was a pretty big bounce downward. And they, they got there. Uh, but we could not, in, in that particular situation, we, had, uh, we were down to 50%, between 70 and 50% on reservoir storage. It was, it was getting dicey. Uh, because, we, and it just, we don't want to go there. Uh, we, can, we can do it. The um, past water use apparently goes to 2003, so mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe we'll add 2002 on there. So you can yeah, yeah, it. yeah, it'd probably be good to do that. So, Mayor, you've, you've already urged once, and this is a second urging, is this leading up to, this is a more crucial urging, leading up to the possibility of mandatory if people don't start complying a little bit more strongly than they have been? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just need to keep talking about it now more consistently and more often uh, and impress upon people the fact that this is now a very serious business. Uh, two weeks ago, we did ask that people voluntarily comply. Uh, since that time, temperatures went up fairly dramatically. Water usage went up by about 10 percent. People uh, obviously have been a little shocked by the higher temperatures and the browning they're seeing with their plants. Um, and, they, and they haven't moved to do what they need to do yet, obviously. Uh, and so <clears throat> we need to impress upon folks that this is not uh, this is not an option. We, if it doesn't rain, we need to bring the, the water usage down to protect, uh, to be sure that we can stay at a level where there's fire protection and basic services. Well, if it's brown, does that mean it's dead? And I think some people think that their lungs have to be blue yeah. in order to be alive. Andy did a great job telling you how you could save water, and that's really a, a question for him, although I think I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the simple answer is no. If, you know, brown is not an automatic guarantee that it's dead. We do want to, as I mentioned, we do want to have people know that after six to eight weeks of drought, um, we will need a little bit of water on the lawn just to keep it alive on things. But the stress dormancy, as long as, as long as we get quarter to a half inch every one to two weeks, whether that's by rain or it's by people uh, doing some watering of the turf. The turf will survive, it'll just be dormant, and then as we return to more normal rains or normal, normal watering ability, then we will see the return of the green and the, and the growth on the plant material. So the goal is to keep your lawn alive as opposed to keeping it green. That, that's exactly right. I mean, the, the lawns, the, the turf is, uh, most turf is, if you think back, goes back to the prairie on things. And, you know, we weren't around to water the grasses at that point on things. So Mother Nature's taught it that it, there are times that it needs to go to sleep to withstand the deep stresses of a drought like this. Um, it does not mean, though, that we can go for six, eight weeks, 12, you know, more without any water on the, on the lawns. Uh, in that kind of case, then yes, we will be replacing a lot of lawns. And on plant material, the other thing to keep in mind is, is that while it's nice for things to be blooming in that, if we can just aim to give enough water to the plant material to keep it alive, um, it may not be thriving, but it will survive the drought. It'll survive these restrictions. Um, for most established material, once a week of watering, so generally going to give enough water to keep the plant material alive. Might even be able to go every 10 days, two weeks on certain plant material. We're just asking people to really try and Everybody help out in a little bit here and a little bit there, and I think we can certainly see that 20% reduction to, to help us out in, the, in, uh, in this time of need. All right, well, obviously, one of the things that, that keeps this city so beautiful are the, are the green lawns and the flowers uh, and the shrubbery and the beautiful gardens, and we don't want that to change ever. Uh, but to be fair to everybody, and to be sure that overall, and in and as, as a whole, we're able to uh, continue that and get through this period of time with fairness to everybody, 
uh, we, we really ask everybody to do, uh, to be cognizant of their neighbors and, and to do their part to reduce by 20% so that we can all survive this thing just fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you.